Sup Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, today I thought I'd do a quick video to go over one of the more common questions I get on this channel, and that is whether or not you can use minoxidil just once per day as opposed to twice per day. The official recommendation on the box for topical minoxidil is that it should be used twice per day, but understandably, applying a topical twice per day can be a bit of a pain in the ass, and that's especially if minoxidil is not the only topical you're using in your hair loss stack. Furthermore, some other topical treatments, like Fluoridol, which is a topical androgen antagonist, cannot be effectively used while minoxidil is still wet on the scalp, since minoxidil contains water, and Fluoridol is hydrophobic, which means it loses its efficacy if it is exposed to water, and this is especially troublesome since topical minoxidil can take such a long time to dry, sometimes as long as four hours. Also. I think that just the sheer inconvenience of applying topical minoxidil twice a day is what drives some people to take oral minoxidil, which is not a good idea at all because it has a much higher potential for dangerous cardiovascular side effects. And yes, that even includes oral minoxidil when it is used at low doses, even though everybody on the internet has a different interpretation of what a low dose actually is. Originally, when Dr. Sinclair proposed using low-dose oral minoxidil, he was talking about 0.25 milligrams per day, yet the most common dose I hear people use now is 5 milligrams per day, which is in the dose range that the drug is used for its original indication of high blood pressure. Also, the majority of people using it aren't even getting a prescription for it, or they're getting prescriptions from dermatologists who have no internal medicine training and don't do any cardiac monitoring. Anyways. I'm not going to revisit that subject since it makes people extremely upset when I bash oral minoxidil, so if you want to know more about why I don't think oral minoxidil is safe, then I'll link a series of videos on why I think oral minoxidil is a bad idea, and you'll find that all linked below. Just so we're clear though, I am not hating on anyone who uses oral minoxidil. It is your body and it is your right to expose it to whatever medication you desire. I'm actually pretty libertarian when it comes to the issue of drugs. However, I just don't feel comfortable recommending it on my platform based on the current safety data. That's all. Anyways, just because it is written on the package insert that it should be used twice per day doesn't necessarily mean that it is true. For example, the official information for using topical minoxidil also tells you that the drug is only effective on the crown and won't work for a receded hairline. We know that is not true though, and that minoxidil will work anywhere it is applied where there is hair, and that is even on regions of the body outside of the scalp, which is why there are groups like minoxidil beards on Reddit where many people have successfully improved the density of their facial hair by applying topical minoxidil to their face. The only reason the package insert says this is because when topical minoxidil was undergoing FDA approval, it was only clinically tested on the crown, and therefore they're only allowed to advertise it as being effective in that particular area. Topical minoxidil, it was first approved by the FDA way back in 1988, though we know in the decades since it was approved that that is an outdated suggestion. It would just be too expensive to redo all the clinical trials just so they can mark it as being effective for treating baldness for other areas of the scalp. So. One has to wonder, is it possible that the twice per day application guideline on the package insert is also an outdated guideline? Can topical binoxidil be used just once per day without compromising its efficacy? Well, let's go balls deep and find out, my fellow hair loss witchers. So first of all, when we're talking about topical minoxidil, we're usually talking about just a few different preparations. There is 2% topical minoxidil, which was originally the only strength approved for women, although now 5% minoxidil is approved for women too. Then there's also 5% minoxidil, which is probably the type of minoxidil that most of us use since it is readily available and about 40% more effective than 2% minoxidil. Although some people will still use 2% topical minoxidil if they get side effects from 5%, since even with a 40% difference in efficacy, 2% topical minoxidil is still the second best hair growth stimulant we have on the market today. 2% and 5% minoxidil, they usually come in a liquid form that contains propylene glycol, which can sometimes irritate the scalps in some people, although there are also propylene glycol free versions of liquid minoxidil like lipogain and a few others. 5% minoxidil also comes in the form of a foam that doesn't contain propylene glycol, so that is another potential option for those who are sensitive to that particular ingredient, and technically that is the only form of 5% minoxidil approved for use by women. Also, 
As a bit of shameless self-promotion, there is a trick to convert the foam into a liquid form that I made a video on, and I'll link that video below, and it is a useful trick because one problem with the foam is that since it expands, a lot of it gets stuck on the hair before it reaches your scalp where you want it to go, but by turning the foam into a liquid, you get the ease of application from liquid minoxidil, but with the fast drying properties of foam minoxidil, so definitely check out that video if you're interested in a way to apply foam minoxidil more effectively. It's also possible to get 10 or 15% concentrations of minoxidil, but what is surprising about those particular concentrations is that they are actually less effective than 5% minoxidil unless you are a non-responder to 5% minoxidil, so don't bother with anything higher than 5% unless you get no results from 5% minoxidil, which isn't common. I made a video on that too, and I'll link that below if you want to learn more about stronger concentrations of minoxidil. Also, another option for topical minoxidil minoxidil non-responders is to use tretinoin in conjunction with minoxidil, which is a compound that will upregulate the sulfotransferase enzyme that converts minoxidil into its active form, minoxidil sulfate, and I'll post my video about that down below as well. So, I'm kind of bringing up these videos as an aside, but I hope you at least get the point that there are ways to make topical minoxidil work even if you are not amongst the 60% of users who respond to the drug, so no big deal if you're not, there's a way to get around that. Getting back to the concentrations of minoxidil though, just so you understand what I'm talking about, a 2% solution has 20 milligrams of minoxidil per milliliter, and a 5% solution has 50 milligrams of minoxidil per milliliter. 5% minoxidil foam has 50 milligrams of minoxidil per gram of foam. Those doses may seem remarkably high, but keep in mind that minoxidil doesn't absorb from the skin into the blood vessels very well. Therefore, the rate of absorption is slow enough that there is very little risk of systemic side effects, even with such high concentrations, which is why the drug is safe enough to be sold over the counter without a prescription, although it is worth mentioning that some people actually do get side effects on topical minoxidil. It's just very, very rare. The dose recommended in the package instruction is to use one milliliter of the 2% or 5% solutions twice a day, which works out to be a maximum dose of 40 milligrams per day for the 2% solution and 100 milligrams of minoxidil per day for the 5% solution. For the foam, you're supposed to use half a capful twice a day, which is also a 100 milligram dose of minoxidil per day. Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a look at what happens to minoxidil after it is applied to the scalp. Obviously, in order for it to get into our hair follicles, it has to penetrate through the skin. Most of the minoxidil applied to the scalp absorbs into the skin and just stays right there in the skin, and very little actually gets into the bloodstream. In fact, only about 1.4% of the dose actually ends up in the blood. Because of this, blood levels of minoxidil and its metabolites are very low, usually below 5 nanograms per milliliter, and often often undetectable with topical minoxidil. In contrast to this, after a 5 milligram dose of oral minoxidil, the peak blood levels on average is 156 nanograms per milliliter. And keep in mind, a lot of people consider 5 milligrams to be a small dose. So with oral minoxidil, you get much higher peaks of minoxidil concentration in the blood than with topical minoxidil, which may explain why there are more cardiovascular side effects like edema and low blood pressure with oral minoxidil compared to topical minoxidil. The other big difference between oral and topical minoxidil is the half-life of the drug. With oral minoxidil, the half-life is just 4.2 hours for the drug and its metabolites. With topical minoxidil, if you search online, plenty of sites list the half-life being as long as 22 hours, but it is extremely difficult to find the source of that particular number. In fact, Looking at the original topical minoxidil literature from way back in the 1980s, the half-life of topical minoxidil was between 23 and 27 hours. From this study and studies using radioactive minoxidil, it seems that minoxidil is absorbed relatively rapidly into the skin, but slowly into the bloodstream. The skin acts as a reservoir for minoxidil, which accounts for its gradual release into the bloodstream, and again, this slow release is probably the main reason for topical minoxidil's better safety profile compared to oral minoxidil which is why topical minoxidil is an over-the-counter drug, and oral minoxidil has a black box warning for its very well-documented cardiovascular dangers. Another source for calculating the time for the elimination of topical minoxidil through the blood is the product monograph from the company Johnson & Johnson that says that 95% of the systemically absorbed drug is eliminated in four days. That gives a rough half-life of about 24 hours. So the half-life is long, actually about a day long, and it appears that the drug hangs around in the scalp of 
the skin much longer than that. It also appears that how often you apply the drug to the scalp doesn't really affect how much absorption of the drug into the blood occurs. In this old study from 1989, one milliliter of 3% minoxidil was applied from four to eight times daily. With these high doses, the serum minoxidil levels range from one to two nanograms per milliliter, and the levels were about the same even when going from four to eight times a day dosing. In fact, in this graph right here, the four times a day dosing resulted in higher blood levels than eight times a day dosing. The investigators concluded that, quote, Systemic minoxidil accumulation resulting from frequent application is unlikely. The initial dose probably saturates the skin for a period of time longer than the dosing intervals examined." Unquote. This constant blood level that is independent of the amount of minoxidil applied seems to be another reason that it is very unusual to get side effects from topical minoxidil. So, the bottom line from that study is that it looks like applying more minoxidil may not have that much more of an effect. So that brings us back to our main question. Is it really necessary to apply apply minoxidil twice per day. Well, it turns out there is very little clinical data on that particular issue. There is a study, though, from 2016, but it is a little bit of a comparison of apples and oranges. The study compared one milliliter twice daily of 2% minoxidil solution, which again is a 40 milligram daily dose of minoxidil, and that was compared with a half cap full of 5% minoxidil foam once daily, which is 50 milligrams of a daily dose of minoxidil. The study was done in women with female pattern hair loss. You can see that the results were almost identical in the change in hair count between the two groups. The goal of the study was to show that once daily 5% minoxidil foam was as good as twice daily 2% minoxidil solution, which it certainly looks like it was from the numbers. However, the statistics weren't strong enough to conclude for sure that they had the same outcomes. In any case, it was this study that led to the recommendation that women could use 5% minoxidil, but in the form of 5% minoxidil foam and apply just once a day. So if once a day dosing is okay for women, is it also okay for men too? Well, the only other study comparing once a day and twice a day topical minoxidil is this study from way back in 1987 before the drug was even approved for hair loss. The study design is also very strange. For the first year of the study, the subject actually got twice daily minoxidil at either 2% or 3%. For the second year of the study, everyone got 3% minoxidil twice daily, which is kind of weird since 3% minoxidil isn't even a commercial product. At least I've never seen it for sale. So it was only after the second year of the study was completed that the subjects got either once a day or twice a day 3% minoxidil for another nine months. The changes in hair counts were measured in a one inch diameter area at the end of the first year and after two years and nine months. So this is a confusing study design and even though 59 subjects total made it to the end of the study, only 41 of them actually had hair counts performed. In the first part of the study, there were no differences at the end of the one year mark between the 2% twice a day group and the 3% twice a day groups in terms of any kind of hair count. However, Supposedly, there was better maintenance of hair counts in the last nine months of the study for people on 3% minoxidil twice a day versus 3% just once per day. You can see all of this in this table here. The increase in non vellus hairs, meaning normal hair count after two years and nine months, was 335 in the twice daily group and 235 in the once daily group. However, the table also includes the results for these same subjects at one year when they were all on twice daily minoxidil. As you can see clearly, the people assigned to get twice daily minoxidil already had a head start over the once daily group because at one year they had an increase of 323 hairs versus 291 hairs in those assigned just once daily minoxidil after two years. So the two groups randomized to once daily versus twice daily minoxidil were not well matched at all, probably because the numbers in each group are small. So this study really is a terrible and confusing study and I absolutely can't stand it. But nevertheless, this is the study I hear everyone quote when they claim that twice a day minoxidil is better than once a day minoxidil. You can interpret it any way you want, but I don't think the clinical data supports the claim that twice a day is any better than once per day. Also, with what we know about the kinetics of the drug in the scalp with its long half-life, I'd be very surprised if twice a day really was much better than once per day. If there is a difference, I don't think it is clinically significant, and personally speaking, I haven't ever noticed any change in density after switching from twice daily to once daily, even after using it twice daily for years. I also know I'm not alone on this one either, since my viewers have more or less told me the same thing, and frankly, I can't think of even one case report or anecdote of anyone losing ground on topical minoxidil when using it once daily versus twice 
twice daily. I don't think it's ever happened. So I think it is important to stress this because any hair loss treatment is going to have to be used long term if it is going to keep on working. And a lot of people find the idea of applying a topical twice daily daunting, which makes adherence less likely. It's probably why a lot of people outright quit or they opt for more dangerous alternatives like oral minoxidil. But I'm telling you, there is no strong evidence that topical minoxidil has to be applied twice daily. Just like the recommendation to only use it on the crown, it is yet another outdated guideline you can safely dismiss. Unlike finasteride, Topical minoxidil is not an essential component of a hair loss stack. A lot of people can get away with just using finasteride alone, and that's especially if they start treatment before losing ground. But if you do need a growth stimulant, topical minoxidil is still the best and safest treatment we have on the market today. And if you don't want to use it more than once per day, that is perfectly fine. Me personally, I'll apply it just a few hours before going to bed, and then I'll just wash it out in the morning so I never have to worry about any negative cosmetic issues it may cause. And in the end, it is only a few extra minutes to my nighttime routine along with my dental and skincare routine, so it is no big deal at all. Certainly nothing about it is so inconvenient that it is worth forsaking the great benefits it brings, so if you are not satisfied with using finasteride alone, there is no need to fear adding an adjunctive therapy like minoxidil to your stack. It is the next logical step and will likely do you a lot of good in your hair loss prevention and regrowth journey. So that's basically my advice on minoxidil. You can take it or leave it, but thanks for watching regardless, and I'll see you all next time, hair loss witchers. God bless. Yes.